So what I'm going to talk about in part in this talk is uh, what's a variable? So a variable is actually a data structure. You might think of a variable as like an identifier. That's part of a variable. A variable is, in programming language terms, it's a structure with two parts. It has an identifier and it has a value. And in some languages it has a type or a memory location, but JavaScript doesn't have those in their variables, so we're going to skip that for right now. Because um, uh, values have types, you can have a string, you have a number, whatever, but they go in any variable. It doesn't, it's not picky. So today we're going to wreck JavaScript's ability to use variables and then bring it back better than ever. Uh, so who's ready for that? Okay. <laughs> so uh, I have some code up here in this REPL, uh, and if you notice, if you know JavaScript, you might notice something a little bit strange about it, which is it doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever. Um, specifically, I'm using variable identifiers that I haven't really seem to define anywhere. I'm like, oh, minus O, the truth equals this times is times valid times JavaScript. What is happening here? Um, so we're going to get into how that's possible. Anything bigger? What? Anything bigger? Oh. Uh, Maybe not. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. Uh, here, let me try. Uh, that's a little bit too big. Uh, let's, this is about as big as I can make without running off the screen. Sure. Um, OK, so objects. If you don't know objects, objects are a way to map a key onto a value. So I have an object called Alice, and Alice has an age, and Alice has a birthday, and Alice has a favorite food. And if you ask for something that doesn't exist, if I'm like, if I mistype something, it's undefined. It says that doesn't exist. Um, and I can access it using these two different notions of uh, dot access and bracket access. They're the same. Um, so here I have an object that's doing something kind of interesting. It has an age, but the age doesn't have a value. It has a getter function. So every time I ask for age, it's actually running this function. And you notice I'm not actually doing this. I'm not uh, like calling it with parentheses like you expect me to call a function. I'm just saying, what's the age? And then inside the object, it's saying, okay, we gotta figure out the age real quick. And that's actually Alice's age in milliseconds. Um, so uh, you can't tell that there's a getter there from the outside unless you do some introspection. Um, but there's infinite possible values for the property age. Every time you ask, it's different. Um, so, but what if we wanted infinite properties and not just one value, one property with infinite possible values? So if we wanted like Alice dot whatever, and I just keep coming up with property names and there's always one there. Uh, and that's actually telling me the length of what I'm asking for. So uh, I don't actually define infinite properties here. That would take too long. So what I do is I use something called a proxy. And I'll talk about what a proxy is on the next slide. A proxy is an object that has superpowers to redefine the way the JavaScript works. So it's called a proxy because it wraps around some inner object. We're gonna kind of ignore that for right now because we're just interested in how we can really mess up how JavaScript works. So I'm using this trap called a get. Proxies have traps, and one of the traps is a get, and this is a function right here. And this function maps a property name onto some function evaluation. So here we're asking for the length of the name. So if I do alice.foo, I get three, because the property name that I just asked for is three characters long. Um, and this is different from the way a getter works, because getter is just like a single named property, and I have a function. This is all properties. Uh, all possible properties. So some interesting things we can do. Uh, this is actually a useful one. We can use it for debugging. So we could say like um, dbg.foo. Um, oh wait, uh, dbg.foo. I can't spell my own variable. Um, so it's it accesses. Sorry, that's confusing. Uh, <laughs> So I'm logging every time I access a property or storing something in a property. So that's really helpful um, if you want to know what's going on in the inner life of your object here. Uh, here's one where properties can't start with S. So if I'm like foo, or sorry, uh, this is a no S dot foo, that's five, cool. And shoot, we would expect to be six because I defined it up there. But actually, it's the string. I don't like S words. And any property that I ask for that starts with an S, it'll complain and give me the string I don't like S words. Um, I could also do something really bananas, which is I could pass the property being asked for into eval. So if I ask for a property called with, that is a for loop, um, then it actually runs that, which is really uh, kind of crazy. That's not something you would normally do. So that, that's eight. <laughs> cool. So, so just sort of philosophically, this is really interesting because we have infinite properties, infinite properties like in potentia. 
um, which is, uh, or in programming terms, we might say lazily evaluated, that they exist there waiting to be asked for. And then as soon as you ask for it, they snap into existence. But there's, there's an infinitude of properties that exist. OK, so now for something completely different. Remember all that we just talked about, and the next couple slides go have nothing to do with it. OK, JavaScript scope. Um, scope in JavaScript is chain-based. So it's based on, I'm going to talk about block scope. There's also function scope, which we won't talk about. Uh, but so blocks. So here I have a while block. And inside the while block, I'm defining two variables called myVar1, myVar2. And I can ask for myVar1 inside the block. And hey, it does it. And then when I ask for it outside the block, bleh, I get an error. Because that's outside of scope now. OK? So there's a scope chain. So I can nest, thing, I can nest blocks inside of each other. And they can define different variables. So here's an outer var inside this while. And then here's an inner var inside the for that is inside this while. And I can ask for all of them, and they're all totally there. So you can see in this picture the way that a lookup works. It says, let me check locally. Or if there is nothing locally, let me check one up. And if I had more, it, would, it could go higher and higher until it reached the global scope. And if there's nothing in the global scope, then it says, well, you're asking for a variable that doesn't exist. Write better code. Um, so let's review what we talked about so far. OK, a variable is a data structure, has a name and a value. And a scope is a set of variables that exist inside a block. And they are ladder, there's a ladder chain. Uh, which is called the scope chain. So blocks have scopes, and functions do too, which I'm not going to talk about. And we create a variable in a scope using those identifiers that I showed, like let foo. There's also var. It's, it, they're similar. Um, and when our code uses any variable identifier, the JS engine says, OK, you asked for a variable called foo. Let's find foo. Let's find the scope where foo exists, and we'll get the value of foo. So I'm going to take issue with one thing I just said, which is uh, let foo. Um, is the way to define variables. So what if I told you that's not the only way to make variables? There is something called a with keyword. So these are two equivalent pieces of code. One is math.max, math.square root. There's a bunch of math dots. Math is an object that has a lot of helpful mathematical functions. So what if I just wanted to say, like, just assume that it's part of math. Um, so I can then get rid of all the math axes by saying with math. And here I have all of these variable identifiers are resolving to properties of the math object. So this is really interesting. That means that any variable identifier could be, if it's inside a with block, resolved by property access of some property. Um, but hey, don't I know about an object with infinite lazily evaluated properties? Yes, a proxy, because I was paying attention earlier. So that means now we're back to the nightmare that I showed you at the beginning, formatted a little bit easier. So here's a proxy where get always returns the identity function that is x maps to x, uh, object that a function that returns its input. Um, so that allows me to do this kind of crazy stuff. Um, so there you go. All variables exist at once, because all properties can exist at once. All variables can exist at once. So let's talk about, real quick, ways we could use this. We could have a binary literal. We, so JavaScript has hex literals, like ox, and then you can put a bunch of hex characters at the end. What if we made a binary literal where any b followed by any number of ones and zeros evaluated out to something? Um, so you can see I'm, doing, I'm adding them. I can do bitwise operations, bitwise and, bitwise xor. That could be pretty cool. Um, I could also do PHP like bare string. So a bare string in PHP is if you use a variable that doesn't exist, PHP will say, oh, well, you probably meant that to be a string because PHP is trying really confusingly to be helpful here. Um, so I'm like, wait a minute, PHP does something weird that JavaScript doesn't, nah. -uh. Um, <laughs> so I implemented that. And actually, a neat thing here is I have nan, which is the string nan, and then I can actually use bracket access repeat, which is actually the string repeat without quotes, because it's a bare word, um, and plus Batman, which I don't know if anybody gets that reference. But <laughs> uh, So I'm going to conclude with, I mentioned that variables don't have types. What if we wanted typed variables in JavaScript without using any kind of like trans transpiler or anything? Uh, so this is a whole mess of code. I'm not going to go over this. But what it does is it lets me actually define a typed variable by using this double, if I have a variable with a double dollar sign, I can say number dollar sign, double dollar sign i equals zero, and then I can loop over it, and as you can see, it's looping. It made a variable called i, and here I have a string called name, and then I say, well, name equals seven, and it says, uh-uh, you said that name was a string. So it's actually using this horrible abuse 
of the way that JavaScript works to implement a kind of useful feature. Um, so anyway, I hope you learned something neat. Uh, never ever do this. Um, <laughs> And also I wanted to give a shout out to uh, a game that really inspired me to do this. It's called Return True to Win. If you thought this was neat and you really like JavaScript internals, um, check it out. Uh, take a picture of this. Uh, and this, this is actually the, the talk right now. It's a web page. So if you go right there, you'll see what you just saw. All right. Uh, thank you very much.